Aloha and welcome to Much More on Medicine. I'm your host, Catherine Knorr. Much More on Medicine is an opportunity to learn about all aspects of healthcare. I talk with guests about medical and alternative care treatment, insurance, medication, surgery, rehabilitation, prevention, and much more. This is my last show before the holiday season and an opportunity to talk about the greatest gift. We're not talking about the latest smartphone, video games, or vintage wine. We're going to discuss a gift that could significantly impact the quality of life in years to come. Joining me in the studio is Robert Rich to talk about the greatest gift, a plan for long-term care. Robert Rich is an experienced financial services professional at Air Associates. His mission is to serve his clients and collaborate to develop uniquely tailored strategies to assure their stability and security. Robert. Yes. Welcome. Hi, Catherine. Thank you for having me. Well, it's great to have you today. Yes, yes. So tell us, what is long-term care? Yes, well, long-term care is the, is the idea that you're going to need someone to take care of you when you are unable to take care of yourself. And normally that will happen at a time when we're aged in life. Uh, hopefully, if, should you need care, it won't be until you're at least maybe in your 80s, but sometimes it can happen sooner. And having a plan to, to, to recover the cost of that care is where people in my industry come in with planning for what we call long-term care insurance. And that is basically the idea that we're going to take the risk of paying for our care in the future and we're going to leverage it with a large insurance company so that when we do need that cost of care, we do need in-home health care or we need a nursing home or we need someone to take care of us physically, we'll have the ability, the assets, to uh, pay for it. So let me ask you, do you have it yourself? I do, I do. I, uh, I bought my first long-term care insurance policy in, uh, when I was 40. Okay. Uh, I just bought what I could afford at the time, and I figured, okay, well, it's going to cost a little more as I age. Uh, I have yet to pick up another policy, but I will be probably pretty shortly, I think, as uh, we're getting close to 50 for myself. So I always said before I was 50, I would get some more uh, coverage. Okay, so I'll let you know that I had it, I got it when I was 50. Yeah. And that was a high priority for me when I turned 50 because I felt that I might not have someone to take care of me when I get older, and then what do you do? So let me ask you, if, at what age do you recommend that someone look into this? Yeah, well, well that's a great question. Uh, the sooner the better, because I, I tell you, one of the hardest parts about getting this insurance, this long-term care insurance, is the underwriting. And as we age, we get more and more ailments. We might get some onset of dementia. All those things that would uh, make it a bad risk for the insurance carriers to cover you. Uh, underwriting is very strict on long-term care insurance. And, you know, honestly, the, uh, the industry itself, it's relatively new as far as insurance products go. It's going back to the 80s, so we're only about, well, oh gosh, 30, 30 years in now. And when, when the idea of paying for this cost of care and providing policies that would cover that cost of care came into play, uh, the insurance companies really had no idea on how to, uh, how to underwrite it and how to charge for it. And really, a lot of the industry uh, didn't do such a great job uh, when they began. Uh, they basically based it on, if we look back at the 80s, the, uh, the interest rate environment was much different than it is today, a high interest rate environment. I know my dad, who bought his house in 1982, was paying 17% interest on his uh, home loan. And so uh, you could get 12, 15% inside of a bank account. Um, so when they started pricing long-term care insurance, they thought, okay, well, we'll take in these premiums, interest rates are high, so we'll be able to keep up with the pace of inflation and these things, the monies that we're putting aside for the future will be growing nicely and it won't be an issue. Uh, unfortunately, what they didn't realize is that interest rates have been falling since the 80s and continue today. Actually, the, the Federal Reserve dropped yesterday as well. But um, as interest rates declined, the return on that investment for the companies didn't go so well. And the other interesting part about that was that they, uh, they weren't sure on 
with the lapse ratio. Do you know what a lapse ratio? I have no idea. You'll have to clue me in. Yeah, so lapse ratio is the idea of how many people will at some point lapse their policies, stop paying premiums, right? That takes that money off the books and it could be afforded off to someone else. And so they had no idea about the lapse ratio that would occur inside these long-term care insurance policies. And what they actually found was they based it on universal life at the time. And four to five percent of universal life policies will lapse at some point in the future. So they based that lapse ratio. Well, four to five percent of these people will stop paying premiums at some point. That'll get us off the hook for their guarantees. And we could pass that, that, those savings on to the next guy. Well, it turns out that less than 1% of people who bought long-term care insurance have actually lapsed their policies because they realize how important it is to have that, that policy in place to help pay for that care when you need it the most. Well, I'll tell you, I make sure that mine doesn't lapse because right. to me, that's more important than any other insurance that I have because I am concerned about who would be taking care of me as I have problems. Now, let me ask you, Robert, um, what type of medical conditions would someone have that would prevent them from being underwritten for this type of coverage? Well, it's a pretty long list. Uh, that's why it is difficult to get through the underwriting, but you should always give it a shot uh, okay. no matter what. And, and there are multiple carriers, so maybe one carrier may decline you, another one may pick you up. Always working with a broker who can handle multiple carriers is a good idea. Um, but as far as uh, medical underwriting risk, I mean, some of the, the, the main ones are Alzheimer's and dementia, um, a lot of uh, impairments to the body, uh, so uh, bad um, arthritis and things that would make you sort of invalid in the future. Uh, you know, I'm not really a medical underwriter, so okay. I, I leave that to them. Sure. Yeah, but there is a, quite an extensive list that can really derail the idea of you getting a policy. But you recommend that even if someone has a serious medical condition, that they at least explore the option. Indeed. Uh, you should always explore the option and see what's available. Uh, aside from just buying long-term care insurance, there's a, a number of other ways to really plan for that care. Uh, the best solution is, a, well, some will say the best solution is a long-term care insurance policy. I like to build combinations of different things that will pay out benefit for the need of long-term care. Aside from a long-term care insurance policy, there's many life carriers now that have uh, built in what they call living benefits, uh, things that will detract from the death benefit of a life insurance contract that, will, that you can utilize to help pay for care. Uh, there's, there's a lot more creative ways now to actually ensure that you've got enough to cover the cost of care because in Hawaii, especially, the cost of care, it can be quite exorbitant. Okay. And yeah. so what if someone tells you that I don't need long-term care insurance because the government will take care of me or I have health insurance? What would you say to that? Yeah. So, well, if we look just at standard Medicare, standard Medicare will cover, I believe, 90 days of uh, intensive care. And then the whole purpose of uh, when you're in the hospital is to get you out of the hospital. And so beyond those 90 days, then uh, there is no cost for uh, coverage when you qualify for long-term care insurance. So the idea when the payout comes, it's called activities of daily living. And there's six activities. And if you cannot do two of those activities, you qualify to start receiving your benefit. Um, and those, ben those activities are uh, bathing, toileting, uh, transferring, walking, uh, um, uh, being able to dress oneself, continence, and being able to use the bathroom. Okay. Yeah, toileting, as I said. Um, so anyway, I digress from your original question. Sure. Yeah. So what if I tell you that I have children or a spouse that could take care of me and why would I need long-term care? Because that's why I had children yeah. take care of me. Yeah, well, that, that, uh, that sounds really unfair. And I think more and more people today are in that sandwich generation where they are not only raising their children and putting them through college, but also having to take care of their, their parents. And so a lot of people have learned that lesson the hard way. When you say you've got family that can do it for you, 
Would you prefer that your family actually manages your care or that your family actually provides the care? And managing care is a lot different. If you've got the assets in place to be able to pay for the help that you need, in, whether it's in the home or at a nursing home, um, it's important that you actually have someone there managing that care for you. If, if your 50-year-old daughter is going to have to quit her job so that she can stay home and take care of you, um, that's going to really put a burden not only on her, go for her future in her retirement, but also uh, going to just put a burden on everyone in the downline of that family. Uh, now, granted, if the, your daughter or son happens to not be working, well, hey, that's great. They can help you out. But there's not too many 50-year-olds out there who can afford not to work. And, and it really becomes, I've seen it time and time again, and just in my practice, where folks whose parents did not have long-term care, they really are suffering today, trying to make up for not only whether they paid for the parents' care out of their own pocket, which then we basically depleted their own retirement savings, or they're, uh, they're having to stop working and they can't contribute to retirement anymore. And now they're just breaking back, trying to get dad in and out of the bed and bring him to the toilet. It's, a, it's not a pleasant way to be living your life, especially when you're in that sandwich generation, you're in your 50s and you're looking forward to your golden years. It really does set you back quite a bit. Okay, yeah. yes. And then nowadays, people live all over the place. So you could have your children living in another state or another country, so it would be very difficult. I remember when my dad had Parkinson's disease and his wife, she had a hard time lifting him or moving him or helping him because of the significant difference in weight. Yes. And he didn't have long-term care insurance, and he contracted Parkinson's when he was about 69 years old. And I think that that was something that he made a mistake about, that if had he had long-term care, it would have helped a lot. And yeah, so yeah, yeah. I see the importance. Yeah. Okay, so you know. we're going to take a short break. I'm Catherine Nora. This is much more on medicine on the Think Tech live streaming network series. We're talking with Robert Rich about the greatest gift, a plan for long-term care. Aloha, my name is Victoria and I'm a host at the Adventures in Small Business. This is a collaboration between U.S. Small Business Administration, Hawaii District Office, and its partners, where we showcase the stories of local entrepreneurs and small businesses, talk about how to start a business, talk about great tips for small business owners, uh, please join us every Thursday, 11 a.m. at Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, see you soon. Mahalo. Aloha. This is Rob Hack. My show is Exporting from Hawaii every other Thursday from 12 to 12.30 p.m. where I bring in people involved in the entire exporting infrastructure in Hawaii, including government, academia, and manufacturers and shippers themselves. Please join me every other Thursday, 12 to 12.30 p.m. on Exporting from Hawaii. Mahalo. We're back, we're live. I'm Catherine Knorr, and this is much more on medicine on the Think Tech Live streaming network series. And we're talking with Robert Rich about the greatest gift, a plan for long-term care. Robert, so if I am having problems and I'm having medical issues, and I, I remember that way back 20 years ago, I bought a policy of long-term care insurance, I might give you a call and say, you know what, I'm having some problems. How does this insurance policy get triggered? Yeah, good question. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, the, the six activities of daily living. So uh, when, there's, when there's toileting, bathing, eating, dressing, transferring, walking, or, or moving, when you're unable to perform two of those six activities and it's written off by your physician, you then qualify to start receiving the benefit that comes out of your long-term care insurance policy. Um, okay, so the doctor would provide a note to 
to certify that you cannot do um, a, yeah. two ADLs or two activities of daily living. Correct? That's correct. Very correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's funny because actually I was just home for Thanksgiving visiting my folks, and they bought a real nice policy 35 years ago that's been compounding all these years. And my dad, he's not in the best shape. And every time I go home, I try to tell them, like, you know, you could probably get your doctor to write off on two of these activities. Start utilizing that policy. You've been paying it for it for 30 years. Oh, no, no, no. And it's like, oh, man, use it, use it, use it. I mean, dad could barely breathe. Dad could barely walk. My dad's having a hard time eating. So, yeah, I, it's funny how even folks who have been paying in all these years just still don't see the don't want to go there to the idea that they're actually needed. Okay. And he's pretty darn close, so hopefully they kick that thing in pretty soon. Yeah. Now, okay, when you get to the point where your doctor actually certifies that you cannot do two of those important tasks, then what, is, what might be provided to you? Do yeah. you have to go into a home, or does someone come to you? What happens? Yeah, no, there's, there's different levels of care. Uh, you know, every, I think everyone I speak to uh, about uh, the idea of needing assisted care in the future, uh, where's the first place everyone wants to be? Home. Yes, home. Okay. Yeah, so if we can really make it work with home health care, providing nurses that can come out and take care of us in the home, uh, that's the ideal situation. A lot of policies these days are, are being built with the idea that we're going to try to utilize home health care first. And really, um, the benefits of getting there, like there's a, some policies have a 90-day waiting limit mm. for you to be able to start getting care, kind of look at it like a deductible. Okay. Um, I know some policies that have 20 days for home health care. So you could wait 20 days and with that, with two of those six activities of daily living checked off. And then once that 21st day kicks in, you can start receiving benefit. And then it goes back to the idea of your, of your family managing your care, right? They're going to go out and they're going to find a nurse to come in and take care of the family, right? And some policies too, companies, they have uh, great assistance in helping you track down what it is you need to do uh, to find people to come take care of those inside the home. And then at some point, maybe transition to a nursing home. Uh, but for the most part, people really do want to age in home and they want to have care in home. So if we can provide that benefit to them, that's much better than getting them moved out and off to a place where they're not familiar and really struggling with that whole idea. But then would it cover the home if they have to be in a particular uh, location where they're taken care of 24-7? Yes, up to the benefit amount, whatever amount has been purchased. You, you know, today in Hawaii, uh, the, the average nursing home, monthly nursing home cost is, uh, sorry, it's hard to get out, is $9,500 a month. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so that's on average. That's for a private room in a nursing home. Uh, it's anywhere from four to $6,000 inside of a residential home. We see those popping up in our neighborhoods, uh, you know, residential nursing home, five beds inside the home. That's actually a very good business. Mm. Um, as the baby boomers continue to age. Um, but yeah, so, so those are two of the options aside from getting a nurse to come and take care of you inside the home. And even with that, maybe you don't have enough benefit to cover a full nursing home, but you've, get, you've provided yourself with enough benefit to, to pay for a nurse and take an eight or 10 hour shift away from either your spouse or your, or your children to give them a break so they don't have to constantly do that for 24 7. Sure. Well, yeah. that reminds me of my stepdad, Ed, who was just put in a nursing home and he has dementia, unfortunately, but had the good fortune of being taken care of by my co conservators who had him in their home. And it was, they, he had his nice bedroom and his own bathroom in their home, and we arranged for him, for them to get money each month. But now, then it got to the point where after about five years of that, it was just too much for them. Right. And so they did a lot of research and found a home for Ed. And fortunately, it's a good place. But if does, someone doesn't have the resources, I could imagine that that would be a very difficult situation. It can indeed. In fact, having resources is what can help you get into a home. 
your question earlier about uh, the government will pay for it, well, that, that's relying on Medicaid. And, and yeah, there is an overwhelming um, need for people who need care on the Medicaid system. So is there enough rooms available for folks who, are, who only carry Medicaid? A, a lot of ways you can get into a nice home is to have the resources to cover those first or two years, one or two, maybe three years. And then once you're in, I've been told uh, that you're able to uh, stay and maybe switch to the Medicaid program should you run out of all of your benefits, whether it's long-term care insurance or you're, you're simply taking money out of your, your savings to cover the cost of care. Sure. Yeah. And then with the aging population, I would imagine that we can't always count on monies being available. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And, and really, when it comes down to it, too, I, I always hear people say, well, I'm going to self-insure. You know, I've got plenty of money in my 401k, or I've got money saved up, or i got stocks, I'll sell a house, whatever the case may be. Um, that's kind of like, I, I understand the skepticism of the industry as a whole. Yes, there's, there, there have been some very predatory companies out there that maybe weren't up and up. Uh, but if you can get on with a good company that really provides a guaranteed benefit and will take care of those costs, why not leverage a little bit of money into the risk with the insurance company and let the insurance company pay for it in the future? You know, just the idea that you're going to pull money from your 401k so that you can pay for the cost of care. Well, for every dollar you pull out of that 401k, it's costing you $1.30 because you got to pay taxes on that dollar. So you're actually talking about risk management of your own uh, person. You are talking about transferring risk to an insurer rather than accepting that risk yourself. Exactly. Well, and, well said like an attorney. Okay. Yeah. What do, and that comes down to peace of mind. And, Is that right? Oh, indeed. To know that, that what you have built up either for your spouse or for your heirs is going to be there, and it's not going to get wiped out by the cost of care in the future, right? Basically, what you're doing is you're taking, with a long-term care insurance policy, you're ensuring that you will have cash flow in the future to pay for that care without having to deplete your assets, without having to sell your home, without having to, you know, just drop everything that you've got all built up over the years, because nothing will wipe it out faster than that cost of care in the future. And this allows you to bequeath your estate to your children, correct? Absolutely, yes. Okay, so yeah. there's a lot of benefit aside from just making sure you're comfortable, but also making sure that you, what you worked for is sustained. Right. right. What, you've, what you've built up over your lifetime is not going to be completely annihilated by the cost of care in the future. Okay. Yeah. So now let's talk about another money issue. What is the range of premium that you've seen for this care? Yeah, um, well, it depends on when we're purchasing and how much. Okay. Um, I always say, you know, if you want the, the good old Cadillac plan, uh, you can pretty much count on anywhere from five to five to nine thousand dollars per individual, I would say ranging from age 55 to age 75. Now, what do you mean by five to nine thousand? Is that per year? Per or? year. Oh, okay. How yeah. does that break down per month? Oh uh, well, uh, five thousand would be about six hundred dollars a month. Um, okay, but if you're just getting something that is sort of basic, decent coverage, what would a monthly plan be? Well, again, it, there's so many factors that are involved. Right. Uh, health, age. Um, but yeah, I mean, whatever you can afford to, I guess, to throw at that idea is probably a good idea. So really, it depends on one's budget, right? So if we're talking monthly, uh, you know, if you, can, if you can do $200 a month into a plan, well, then at least you're getting something. Okay. No matter what age you are, right? So my first policy that I bought when I was 40 cost me $100 a month. Okay. Yeah, and it gets me, I think, uh, the daily benefit of hundred and fifty dollars a day right so, right yeah so, so I will need more in the future today it costs you about three hundred dollars a day for the cost of care 
Uh, so I'm definitely going to need some more in the future, and I will buy more when the time comes. Sure, yeah, sure. Probably, yeah. t probably tomorrow now I'm thinking about <laughs> now it. Now that you're thinking about now it. Now that we're talking about it. Right, know? exactly. Yeah, I'm at risk. I'm at risk. Sure. Yeah. And, you know, and I think we all know what our potential health risks are in terms of what runs in our family, what we might be facing, Right. Um, too. I mean, you have a little bit of a clue how, how well you treat your body, if you yes. exercise, if you eat right. And you know that, and you're basically your lifestyle. So right. that might tell you how much your risk a little bit. But I always say buy as much insurance as you can afford. In terms of when you're looking at any type of insurance policy, what can you afford, and try to get enough so that you can consider this um, these risks. And do you have a last word for us? Well, I, I just you know. Well, when it comes to planning, the, the solution isn't always just a long-term care insurance policy. There's many ways to layer other assets and other things in place to help you cover that care. So whether or not it's going to cost you $10,000 a year and you go, oh, that's too much. Okay, fine. Let's make it five and then let's come up with other solutions that can help you cover that care when the time comes. Because basically it comes down to four things, you know. Who? Who's going to provide you care? Think about that. Who is going to provide the care for you? Is it your spouse? Is it your kids? What does it mean to them? And where? Where do you want the care? In home or inside a facility? And then how? How are we going to pay for this care? If we can move assets around and leverage it into the risk for the insurance company, it's a much better situation to be in. Fantastic. Well, Robert, you've told us so much about long-term care insurance. Now it really motivates me to make sure that I have enough. So... Okay, we're out of time and we'll have to wrap it up. I'm Katherine Knorr. This is much more on medicine on the Think Tech Live streaming network series. We've been talking with Robert Rich about the greatest gift, a plan for long-term care. Thank you for joining us today and I wish you and yours Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah and Happy Holidays and a Happy New Year. And I'll see you again in 2020. Thanks to our broadcast engineer, our floor manager, and to Jay Fidel, our executive producer who puts it all together. Please join us for future ThinkTech productions.